All right, this is Grand Blue Versus. What is this game? Well, it uh, just came out, but it's not out in North America yet. This is actually the version from the Hong Kong PlayStation Network store. If you're interested in getting the game before it comes out in North America, sometime very early March, it'll be about a month, then I will link information on how to get it early. If you do feel like getting it early right now, I would really recommend trying to get the Hong Kong or the Singapore version because those have English subtitles, English menus, Everything is in English. Uh, I'll have information on how to get the game early if you want to spend the money to do that now uh, down below. Otherwise, again, the game will come out in early March. So why am I playing this game? Well, I, um, I might have played the mobile game just a little bit. Now, actually, I'm just a big fan of Arc System Works uh, fighting games. I thought this game looked good. I know to a lot of people, it seems maybe on the slower side, it looks kind of Street Fighter-ish, and it plays kind of Street Fighter-ish. In the little bit of time that I have spent on it, it feels um, actually a lot smoother than I thought, and I'm really happy about that. At this point, I have gone through the tutorial, which is surprisingly pretty good. So I'm not an expert at this game. It just came out. I just did the tutorial. Um, I've watched very, very little footage of this game. I'm pretty much in the same boat as most of you guys. This means two things. One, I don't have the opportunity to make a complete guide for the game or for characters because I don't think myself or really anyone has enough information yet to do the kind of guides that I've been doing for Dragon Ball, which are really detailed and really fit into the meta. Uh, at this stage of the game, we're just learning. So the second thing that me having no experience with the game means is that I can show you what it's like to learn a game from scratch, what kind of questions uh, competitive players might ask to kind of learn the game a little bit quicker. So I really think this is a great opportunity to show you guys what it's like to learn a new game from scratch as quickly as you probably can. So I'm going to spend the next week learning Gran. He's the simple protagonist character. He seems like a pretty simple dude and he seems like he's just going to play the game simply and really well. I don't think you have to start with the most basic character to learn a fighting game. I don't think you have to learn the character that plays the game properly to learn a fighting game. You don't have to start with this like I am. If you want to start the game off with Vezeraga or Luane, whoever interests you, I say go for it. I'm just going to start with Gran because it's kind of just what I want to do. I just figure this is a great place to start with the game for me and for you guys watching. But again, so until uh, yesterday, I hadn't watched any of this game or kept up with it really at all. But through the tutorial, a few videos, and some training mode later, I think I have a pretty decent idea of the system mechanics and where I think the meta is gonna go for a little while at least. We don't know where the meta is gonna end up in you know, months down the road or what it's gonna look like at EVO. By the way, this game's at EVO, if that matters to you. I don't think that should matter too much, but at the very least, I'm sure there's some people that might be persuaded to give it a try because of that. So let's get started by going through the basics, the system mechanics a little bit, and what this game kind of is. This game is pretty Street Fighter-ish, meaning we are going to play a pretty grounded heavy game. We're going to play footsies, we're going to play around our normals and fireballs and jumping over fireballs, stuff like that. If you've played Street Fighter before, you're going to feel pretty at home with this game. And there's more similarities to Street Fighter 2, where you actually can't block in the air. So we have a recording of him just jumping and trying to block, and he couldn't block the anti-air. I believe you can block dragon punches in the air, but only like the later active frames. If they're close to the ground, it's air and block. Same with uh, fireballs, you can block those in the air, or at the very least you can block grands. I don't know about every character yet. But there isn't any really crazy movement in this game. You can jump and you can super jump, but that's kind of about as crazy as it gets. You can run, you can back dash, but you can't like double jump, you can't air dash. Some characters have some unique movement options, like Matera has a lot of unique movement options, but in general, you're not gonna be zipping around like most anime games. Unlike Street Fighter though, jumping seems like a much bigger risk. It's still super important for trying to call out something like a fireball and get a good punish for it, but if someone is ready for your jump, they're going to actually be able to counter hit you in the air and get a really good combo for it. And a lot of corner carry, a lot of damage. It seems like universally most of the characters have really good combos off their anti airs. You're going to want to experiment with that and see what your character can do. Even if you don't get the counter hit, the situation is generally really good. 
because you're going to be able to meaty them as they land on the ground. They can't do anything in the air, at least to my knowledge. So you'll still get your offense started, even if you don't get the full combo. And in the corner, getting aneared like this can be really bad. We're only a day in, but some of the combos, especially the anti-air combos for some of the characters, are already looking pretty crazy. So even though this game looks and feels and plays similarly to Street Fighter, the uh, depth to it and the combo depth to it seems a lot more like an anime game. Like just imagine what combos are going to look like a month from now. We have no idea. One unique thing about this game is the skills. So if you look under my health bar, you can see all the skills that my character has. And you can also see how to do those skills. There's actually a special move button. This is one of those things that seems like it's in the game to help new players get into the game. So if I hit the button, I get fireball. If I hit forward, I get my anti-air dragon punch. If I hit down, I'll get my slash. And if I hold back, I'll get this far kick which is really good for corner carry. You can also input the special moves normally, so a dragon punch would be a dragon punch motion of forward, down, and down forward. Or I could do a fireball with just a standard quarter circle forward fireball input. Same for the kick backwards, etc., etc. But if we could do an easier input that we could never really mess up, why would we ever do the actual standard input of like a quarter circle forward or a dragon punch input? Look at the cooldown on these skills. If I were to just do a Dragon Punch with the special input, it takes a long time to come back. But if I were to do the Dragon Punch with the standard forward, down, down, forward input, it comes back pretty much immediately. And this goes for all of our specials, our fireball, our kicks, everything. And this is for every character. So if we can train ourselves to use the standard inputs, why would we ever want to use the easy inputs now? Well, the easy inputs have probably some good uses. For one thing, having an easy DP is really nice. If someone jumps over my fireball, but their timing isn't perfect, where I could still block, I'm not gonna have time to anti-air with Grand's good anti-air, his down heavy. But I would still be able to Dragon Punch. And this is a really nice option to have. We could take this one step farther, where having an easy input to do an invincible move can let us react to things that we probably wouldn't be able to realistically react to uh, otherwise. So let's take an overhead for example. We could just block an overhead on reaction by standing up, or we could probably actually react with a reversal instead. Trying to react and input an actual dragon punch motion is really hard. I don't think I would get this very consistently, and I think this is something that's going to prevent people from ever wanting to do this in an actual match. But just reacting by hitting forward in a button is really easy to do. But over time, we might start to see people react to things like this or command grabs, uh, anything that they think is reactable up close with reversals. Another nice thing about this is we can just buffer specials really easily inside of our moves. So if we're sticking out a normal and neutral, thinking that the opponent might move forward into it or that we might whiff punish something, we can buffer the special move for the slash inside this move. And if it ever makes contact, the slash will come out. And that'll let us get some corner carry, decent damage, and a decent knockdown. It's not coming out, it's not coming out, it runs into it and it comes out. This sort of thing is really common in fighting games and you could realistically do this pretty easily with your special inputs normally, but having an even easier way of doing this, um, especially for mid and low level players is really, really nice to have. And personally, I think I'm gonna use it this way all the time. Especially since I think we'll probably get this particular skill back in time before I would need it on offense again anyway. This game also has EX moves, so if you input any of these specials and instead of hitting the light button or the medium button, if you hit the heavy button, you'll get the EX version. Or you can just hit whatever direction it is and the special button to get the EX version of that special. But you see, the recovery on these special moves with the EX versions is really, really long. Look how long the fireball is taking to come back. But they're also really useful. Generally, they're all really good for combos in the corner, giving you a ton of damage and really good extensions. Or they're good for corner carry, like that. Just be careful that after you use one of these moves, you can't even use the easy versions for a while, so I can't throw fireballs at all anymore. So resource management in this game might be a little different than a lot of other games. For me personally, I think it's going to take me a while to get used to. In other games, I'm used to managing resources. Should I spend meter? Should I not spend meter? In this game, every move has its own meter, its own cooldown period, so it's going to be kind of weird and take some getting used to personally. 
So if I were to use my EX Kick, and I can't use that for a knockdown anymore, I might be forced to use my Dragon Punch to get a knockdown instead. Just an example. So if meter isn't used for our specials, what is meter used for though? Well, meter is pretty much just used for super. So if we get to 100%, we can input a super with quarter circle forward and our special button. And these supers do a ton of damage, especially if they're used early on in a combo. So if you're not in the corner where you could get a really good combo, you could still punish something like a Dragon Punch for really good damage doing just a single hit into a super. And I'm sure we could optimize this a little bit down the road. Also, if your health is below 30%, you can do a Desperation Super, which is hitting your unique button and your special button when you input your super. I can do it here in training mode because it's training mode, but in a real match, you'll need to be below 30% health. These will obviously do a little bit more damage. I think you'll get your skills back in the meantime, and the knockdown is noticeably better than on the regular supers. Another thing in this game is a block button. So, if you hold the block button, you'll block. Obviously, like any other fighting game, you can block simply by holding back or by holding down back. So blocking lows and mids, or mids and overheads, right? Just like normal, but the block button will do that too. So we're blocking mids and overheads, and we're blocking lows and mids. And the reason the block button can be useful is because it makes blocking ambiguous cross-ups really easy, because we don't have to worry about left-right mix-up. I'm not holding forward or back, not holding forward or back, not holding forward or back. However, I will still need to block lows and tech throws normally. So I'll still need to switch to crouching if I want to block an empty jump low, for example. The really cool thing about the block button for me is that if you hit back in the block button, you'll do a spot dodge. And if you hit forward and the block button, you'll do a roll. And both of these have some invincibility on them. So we could probably use a spot dodge to avoid having to block fireballs. Because at this range, fireballs are actually going to be plus. Where I'm not going to be able to really challenge. But if I can make it with and then throw out my own, Maybe that'd be really useful. Or we could kind of roll through it and try to take our turn. One thing I found is that if we roll through a fireball, we're not actually plus though, if we do it on reaction. So if we actually wait to see the fireball and react to it and we roll, we're not gonna be plus. We might not be plus, but we can probably still usually block as long as we didn't roll too late. But if we treat this as a guess instead of a reaction, it makes a little bit more sense. It's kind of like how we would wanna jump over a fireball to get a punish we could potentially roll through a fireball as a guess in the same exact way to get a punish this way too. And this doesn't just apply to fireballs, it can apply to any big commitment that you think the opponent is going to use, whether it's a projectile or a really large active attack. Um, Grand's normals are pretty average range, I'd say, but some characters have gigantic normals and roll is probably gonna be something we're gonna have to use as a way of getting around those sometimes. But if we guess that our opponent is going to go for a roll, we can probably react to it with a uh, punish on the tail end of its recovery. Also, roll and spot dodge aren't going to be throw invincible. I don't know the exact frame data on roll or spot dodge yet. It's still super early on in the game's life, and I'm still waiting for frame data to really uh, be released. But uh, over time, we'll figure more of this stuff out and be able to use it a little bit better. Next, let's talk about throws. As with most fighting games, and especially Street Fighter type fighting games, throws are a really big part of the mix-up. In fact, I'd say throws are uh, probably the biggest part of mix-up in this game, especially for a character like Gran that probably doesn't really rely on high-low mix-up. So if we can get close to our opponent, we could go for a tick grab. And if they want to get out of this, they're going to have to tech our throw. And they're going to do that by inputting their own throw around the same time. If we do it on the later end of the throw recovery, then we'll fall over, we'll actually take a little bit of damage, and our opponent is going to be at an advantage. But it's probably still better than getting thrown out right. I think the damage is lower, the situation isn't quite as bad. But if we want to bait someone's throw tech, what we could do is run up, look like we're going to throw, and then whiff punish their throw with a shimmy. Most characters also have overheads that are airborne, so this is another great way to go over the throw tech instead. And since it'll counter hit throws in this situation most of the time, you can actually get a good combo for it. So let's set the opponent to block all, and we'll set their counter action to throw. So now if we run up and hit a button, 
they'll try to throw us back. And this will let us uh, practice beating throw techs. So we can practice with a shimmy, or we can go over it with a throw. If you're coming from Dragon Ball, you're probably not used to seeing counter hits actually matter. But in this game and a lot of other fighting games, counter hits actually add extra hit stun to your combos. So his overhead doesn't actually combo on its own. It's just a good chunk of damage and the situation's pretty okay. But if it counter hits, we'll be able to get a combo. It seems that there's also a little bit of extra hit stun on crouching opponents. So hit can combo his standing medium into a sweep if you get the link on a crouching opponent. But this same thing wouldn't work on a standing opponent. It'll be interesting to see how people take advantage of that over time. One more thing that's pretty universal in this game is every character has a unique action. That's the U down there. We have light, medium, heavy, and unique. This is different for every character, obviously. In Grant's case, he gets a far slash that knocks down on hit, and he can charge it up to go farther, faster, for more damage. And he can also cancel out of it at any time. So he can continue charging it over time until he gets to the max level. And then he can let it rip at really any point. And what's really nice about the fully charged version for Gran is that it's actually invincible. It's not invincible frame one, so it's not like a dragon punch or anything, but it goes really far, it does good damage, it knocks down while being invincible. So this makes it potentially useful as maybe a reaction to a fireball. I'm able to react to it in training mode because, well, I'm the one that set the recording and I know that it's about to come, but I think in an actual match it might be a lot more difficult. I don't know how realistic this is going to be as an option, but this is one thing I suspect it could be used for. Also, if you hit down in your unique action, you're going to end up getting your sweep. Sweeps are really good because they set up a uh, safe jump for pretty much every character as far as I know. Obviously I haven't tested it with every character, but if you just hold up forward after hitting with a sweep it seems like you can get a pretty easy safe jump that hits really late. So if they try to wake up with a reversal, you should be able to block. In fact, we can set that by going to counterattack settings, counter on wake up, and we can set this to our uh, dragon punch. And we can practice our punish as well. Just like that. In fact, I think we can also safe jump from our forward throw in the corner if we delay our jump just a little bit. If we do it too early, then it's not actually meaty anymore. Uh, you can be too early, so you're gonna have to practice delaying the jump a little bit. Too early. Slightly delayed and it still works. There we go. So I think that just about covers the basics, at least as much as I know right now. Hopefully I didn't miss anything too big, but if I did miss anything, we'll uh, probably see it come up at some point throughout the week. Again, we're gonna learn him throughout the week, practice him throughout the week. We're gonna play some matches on and off, and any problems I have, we're gonna practice uh, labbing those problems in training mode and see what we can do. Hopefully this video doesn't end up being too long, but now that I think about it, a whole week of footage being condensed into one video is probably still gonna be kinda long. We're gonna try and catalog our progress as the week goes on. Any problems we run into or anything that we feel like we need to lab or learn, I'll try to include and touch on here. But first, what do I think our game plan should be? We need a game plan. What, what do we think our character does? Do they keep away the whole time? Do they mix up? In my mind, I think a good place to start is what's the good thing? The good thing for me is throw mix up. Throws are good and baiting throws is rewarding with like either a shimmy or in overhead. So we want to get to that good thing, the throw mix up, as much as we can. Also, corner damage seems to be really high, so if we can get them to the corner, that's the other good thing. So I think our game plan should be get close and throw, or get them to the corner. Maybe those two things overlap, maybe they don't. Everything else we learn is going to fit into this somehow, and I think uh, in general neutral is going to be the most important thing because we're just going to need to figure out what tools we need to use to answer whatever our opponents have. I think having a basic game plan for neutral makes the most sense. So we're going to play kind of like Ryu. We're going to throw a lot of fireballs. We're going to try and anti-air people that go over our fireballs. And occasionally, if we find something we think we can whiff punish, we'll go for a whiff punish somehow. But yeah, that doesn't seem like too much, right? I mean, maybe I'm overgeneralizing it a bit, but we're just going to play matches, see how it goes, see how this basic game plan works out for us. And then anytime we get beat up, 
and we feel like we need to go back to the drawing board, we're gonna run back into training mode, we're gonna see what options we have to beat the thing that beat us up, and we're gonna go from there. So let's actually try going online and playing a match. Okay, so I think it's making me fight bots before I can go online, which I guess makes sense. It wants you to practice actual matches, but I'm probably gonna skip this for you guys. So I think now it's forcing me to actually play with people. So I have to play with two humans before I can actually go online and go to the lobby. Okay, it's uh, 1.15 in the morning, so I don't imagine I'm gonna find the best connections right now. So I'm just gonna put up with whatever connections I have to, and I'll probably play online again tomorrow. Okay, he's DPing already. He knows to jump, but maybe he's doing it a little too much. Hmm, it's gonna take some practice for me to not mess it up. Yeah, being in the corner feels like it sucks. It seems like the best place to cash out most of my EX moves to, especially the fireball, because if I do it mid-screen like that, I don't really have fireballs anymore, I can't throw them, it's like my whole game plan doesn't really make sense. But in the corner, it's worth so much damage. Okay, so I forgot to mention it before, so I'm gonna go back to it really quick. You have two different sets of moves with each of your characters. If you're far away, you have a set of moves that go reasonably far. For certain characters, they go really far. And then you have a different set of moves for when you're up close. And all of these can go into auto combos. So if you just hit MMM or HHH, you'll get the auto combo from that move. And this is really nice because it makes hit confirming really easy if you're up close. But you can't do this from your farther moves. So this is light if I'm slightly spaced out. This is light if I'm up close. So this is really important to keep in mind. Something I didn't cover before that I want to really quickly mention now is that with whatever character you pick, you're going to want to have a basic block string that works for combos and for pressure. So I found one with Grand that's all frame traps and combos. So you can pretty easily confirm by the third hit whether you need to use specials or not to get a knockdown. Crouch light, stand medium, and then stand light. So if we set our opponent to counterattack with his fastest button, a standing light. We'll see that he gets frame trapped by the standing medium. And we can confirm this with a stand light, or I think maybe even another medium if it's counter hit state. Yeah. And for uh, day one, I think this is a really good place to start. And the good thing is, since we have a frame trap from our light, this means we can set up a tick throw. So if we establish that they're gonna get frame trapped, they don't wanna hit buttons there anymore. In the future, we can just go for a tick throw or we can go for a throw bait with the overhead or a shimmy. And it kind of gives you somewhere to kind of start with a flow chart and you can make adjustments as you go on in the set. See so like, okay, this person never gets hit by the frame traps. I should go for mix ups next time. Or this person never takes the mix up. So let's just go for the basic block string and get our frame traps. All right, with that, I'm going to bed. We'll pick this up another day. All right, it's a new day. I'm shaved today. It's really bright out. The crappy webcam I have to use to record this is making it look like heaven is bursting through my window. Okay, so let's go to ranked match. Let's set for a uh, good connection speed, North America, okie doke. We'll queue up and it looks like it'll let us do training mode while we're waiting. Okay, I don't know how good a two bar connection is, but we'll find out. Generally in these games, I wouldn't really do anything below three, but the game isn't out in the US yet, so I think my uh, choices are probably a little bit limited. Galena. Okay, so she's pretty simple. I know a little bit about her because I've watched uh, Lord Knight's videos. She's got really good buttons. She's got a fireball. She plays, it sounds like she plays pretty similarly to Gran. And again, we're just gonna play kind of a fireball heavy game. We might have to play around hers more than ours. Oops, that's not my in here. Unfortunately, when you're learning a new game, muscle memory takes a while. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, I can't throw my fireball because I just threw the EX one. I should really keep that in mind and try to save that. Try to save that as an option for the corner when I can confirm it's gonna be good for combos. I think my instinct is to use it in block strings right now because it is plus on block. Okay, I wanna try and super if he throws a fireball. Will it reach in time? It doesn't have invul? Wait. What the heck? That's in like every fighting game ever. Like supers go through fireballs. Okay. We'll have to lab that when we're done here. A little too far from my end here. I'm gonna have to learn the spacings. Oh, I like that. So her unique action reminds the charge. Hers is uh, kind of this armored thing that has a follow-up to it. Looks like we can rematch in ranked. I really like that. I hope we can rematch indefinitely, but it probably won't let you do that. I think in ranked, they typically don't want you to do stuff like that. That fireball anti aired me. Dang. Okay, I think that move I just used was actually a uh, punishable on block. I should be careful throwing that out. Okay, so we're just gonna record her throwing a fireball and blocking, and we're just gonna see, can we super through it? We can't. <laughs> All right, so it looks like I have the chance to go offline to play games, so I'm gonna go and go to casuals instead. Can't record there, and I can't training mode there, but I think we'll find a lot of things that we'll need to lab afterwards. It'll help us figure some stuff out. Hey, it's me again. I went to offline casuals for about six hours yesterday. We played for probably about four of those. I wrote some things down to help us continue to figure some stuff out in training mode afterwards so I didn't waste the time I spent there. The first thing I noticed that was kind of neat is that fireball wars happen a lot, especially because a couple people I was playing with there were also playing Grand. And one cool thing I realized is that the medium version of his fireball has a pretty nice use here. The first hit absorbs their fireball and the second one can go out and potentially hit them as well, which is really cool. So if I ever find myself in a fireball war where it seems like we're just chucking fireballs a lot, we have options of spot dodging, we can sweep under it, we can use a medium fireball. This is all pretty cool, I wanna remember this. Oh, I just realized wearing a striped shirt with a crappy webcam is a bad idea. <laughs> I'm probably never gonna wear this shirt on here again. All right, moving on. Okay, another thing I realized, although Grand's buttons I think are actually pretty good, uh, we don't really know in the context of the game how good or bad they are yet. Uh, one thing that's a problem is that none of his normals reach far enough in some situations. I don't really know how to challenge, and I was running into this problem a lot. So I need to kind of rethink how I challenge in a situation like this after I block a move like this. Like, I know that I'm at advantage. I know I'm plus here. But how do I how do I actually stop her from hitting a button in this situation? And I think the easy answer is let's toss a fireball instead, that'll always reach. Or we can challenge with this move instead, which is really good. Or potentially we could just walk forward and hit a button this way. I'm not always gonna be able to challenge with a normal, so I'm gonna have to so I'm gonna have to rethink how I approach these situations sometimes. Another problem I was running into a lot is I was trying to use EX Fireball mid-screen, like, at all. And I think there's probably a time and a place for using this mid-screen, but in general, even if you hit with it, it's not a ton of damage. The knockdown's not bad, but the problem, especially when you don't hit with it, is that you don't have access to Fireballs for a long time, even if you input it normally. So this whole time, I can't throw Fireballs at all. And I think with Grand, that's a huge deal because I think his Fireball game is really good, his buttons aren't the best, so if you want to challenge someone who has far buttons, Fireball is pretty much your most consistent option. Especially when it came to hit confirming combos, for some reason, I wanted to combo into Fireball mid-screen. Instead, I'd even get more corner carry if I just comboed into that instead. I'd have all my options available still, I wouldn't be on cooldown for anything, assuming I inputted the specials normally. And the corner carry is just better, so why not? Okay, take this situation, for example, with a really far jump. Anti-airing with down heavy seems really good here. And it is, it's super good reward. It's uh, high damage, high corner carry. We build good meter. It really makes the other person feel crappy for jumping. But here's what happens if they don't actually commit to a button at this far range. Nothing, I just whiff. And in fact, if we had her do that, basically I would whiff my crouching heavy and then they could land and hit me for trying to anti-air. 
This was a situation that came up a lot yesterday, kind of just on accident, and I really want to figure out an answer to this sort of situation. My first thought was, can we anti-air with super? And maybe? I mean, it looks like we'll reach, but what happens if she falls with a button instead? Do we actually go through it? No, we don't. So, not actually a good option. Can we reversal? No. What about EX reversal? Probably not. Maybe, maybe we, maybe this will reach, but I don't like the situation. It looks like we whiff the follow-up hit. We're too far away. I think honestly, just like knowing that they're not gonna reach us and throwing out a fireball and catching them on the way down or anti-airing with a slash could be good. That seems solid. I think probably the best thing I could do is just challenge with something that I know hits into the space. We could just wait till they land and try to challenge on the ground. If they try to do anything, they'll probably end up having to block. Or we could take the risk and try anteering them in the air. But I think choosing to anteer from far away might be pretty risky just because if they do fall with a button, then we'll probably get hit. Yeah, so I think trying to catch them on the way down is gonna be pretty hit or miss. I think in general, if they fall with a button, they should hit us more often than not. But it's still good to know our options in this situation, right? Okay, so I have these two set to play back at random. What we're gonna do is time, we're gonna time a button slightly after they land or slightly before they land. And the idea is we wanna do it after we would have blocked their jump in, but before they can hit a button on the ground. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I am hitting the button here. You can see in the center there. I'm just hitting it slightly later than when they fall. And if they ever go and land on the ground, we should still get a button. I see the practice actually buffering our specials. There we go. So that seems like probably the lowest risk option to deal with this. Maybe it seems bad that we have to block the jump in from far away, but at this range, there's no mix up that's going to be happening. So the risk isn't super high for us. They are still at advantage, but I don't want you to think that blocking a jump in from this range is anywhere near as bad as blocking a jump in this close, because this close, I could go for a throw. And that's probably the main mix up in this whole game. As long as I can stay in this range or farther, I'm not super worried about that. Also, one thing I uh, thought was really cool about playing offline is reacting to things is a little bit easier than it is online, which lets me feel like I can do things like charging up Grand's unique action and making people want to do something because they see this move getting charged up and they think, oh crap, I have to do something. Especially since eventually it is really fast really strong, uh, does a lot of damage, and will go through fireballs. So I could just charge this in neutral and it'll make the opponent feel like they have to do something. So the most common thing I saw was that they would try to throw fireballs. You can actually react to the fireball in time to block, to cancel out of the charging stance. And another really cool thing is that spot dodge seems to be one frame. So again, this is back and guard. So anytime we can block, we can spot dodge. So as long as I can cancel out of this in time, I can always do it, which is really cool. And then afterwards, we can go for our own fireball. And if they try to do two of them, they actually won't get the second one because the first fireball will still be on screen. You can't throw a fireball as long as your first one is still on the screen, which means uh, this is going to be really important for winning fireball wars. Imagine having this in Street Fighter. It'd be kind of interesting. All right, and those are my notes from first day at Casuals. Again, this is a learning process. We're gonna play some matches, and then we're gonna go to the training mode and figure some stuff out. And we're just gonna go back and forth like that. And uh, hopefully by the end of the week, we have a pretty good understanding of our character, or at the very least for where the meta's at right now. All right, so I played for a while on stream yesterday, and there's a handful of things that I learned and figured out along the way, and a few things that I wanna really quickly lab and figure out because of those sets. So the first thing that comes to mind is how rolling doesn't go through everything. We can roll through projectiles and be totally fine. However, if we try to roll through a move that's close to the ground, we'll get hit. Yeah, so rolling seems to have like a height requirement on it. The move needs to be a certain height above the ground for you to be able to roll through it. This means it's totally fine against most projectiles, but it isn't going to work against everything. So if you're thinking you're going to call out a move in a situation by rolling, you got to be careful about like, do you think they're going to use a move that's close to the ground or not? This doesn't necessarily need to be a low. I can stand block this and be totally fine. So I think our option instead is gonna be to probably like counter poke. And that's probably a better call out to this kind of thing instead. Alternatively, we can still spot dodge and probably get a little bit of advantage. Let's see who's 
plus in the situation. Oh, I'm actually negative. Okay. You gotta be careful. If you spot dodge certain moves, you are still gonna be negative. So I think the correct answer in a situation like this is gonna be to counter poke. All right, so obviously roll is good to help us get through things in neutral, especially projectiles. And we can definitely just react to them and go through. There's other ways to navigate around them. Like obviously we can spot dodge or in Matera's case, we can duck the standing one. We can roll through the crouching one. But again, because it isn't just lows that are the problem, it's like a height thing. If certain projectiles make contact with basically where our feet are going to be, we can't roll through it. So one example could be Matera's downward shot. Because it's making contact with the ground, we actually can't consistently roll through it. So if you see one like this, just know you can't roll through it. If you see one on the ground, then you're totally fine to do so. Going along with this theme of not being able to roll through things, I found certain things that I was really having trouble dealing with, such as uh, Fairy's Crouching Medium, which just goes like half screen, it's a low, I can't roll through it. If I try to throw a fireball, I'll get hit first. Even if I'm close, like we might trade instead. Oh no, she just goes under it. That's awful. <laughs> and I'm too far to consistently challenge a lot of the time. So how do I stop this move or how do I at least get some sort of advantage for it? And I realized that I do have a move that goes super far that I haven't been using at all. This, that's awesome. Um, the Tim's kick is uh, actually pretty good. If you space it out, it's gonna be safe on block. It's punishable if you're up close, so just be really careful about that. And it actually goes over moves like this, which is really nice. And if we ever happen to be near the corner with this and we get a counter hit, it can be absurdly good damage. Jesus. Another move I realized I wasn't using enough is his universal action. It goes really far, it's really active, it's really safe as long as you space it out. If you're up close, again, this is another move that's punishable on block, so be careful with it. I think he should try rolling a little bit. Uh, dodging a bit. That's good. Dude, that move is so active. It's insane. I have got to remember to use this move. And just like the Tim's kick, this does tons of damage on counter hit in the corner. This isn't even like optimized, by the way. I have no idea what the optimal combo is. That is really good damage. Grand does a lot of damage. And like I said, it's really active, so it'll accidentally beat rolls even if someone's trying to go through one of my moves. But if I try to like counter poke here or throw a fireball, they might go through it as a guess. I could accidentally beat the roll with this move, which is really nice. I really needed to be using this a little bit more. This move also seems like usable for meaties because you can actually set up a plus on block situation with it after a knockdown. So here I'm gonna whiff jab and hit it and they can't really do anything afterwards. Same thing if we can combo into our sweep, we have a setup for this as well. I don't know if I would prefer this over a safe jump, but it's pretty cool. I might try using this in matches a little bit. Another situation that came up for me a lot is Matera has this hop she can do in pressure and she can kind of reset pressure by doing an air dash. And in this situation, I was trying to anti-air when I was online. I was missing it a lot because I either wasn't ready in time or maybe it was the net play, but I wasn't consistently getting the anti-air. So I started doing anti-air DP instead, because again, this is just one button. It's just forward plus the uh, special action button. But what I didn't like about this is it felt hard for me to get a good meaty in this situation. If you hold back and hit a button, as soon as you see your character touch the ground, you'll get a back tech, as opposed to doing a neutral tech or a late tech. But I was really struggling to figure out how do I open, how do I meaty someone in this situation? And really, this is part of what got me to realize I should start using the Tims a little bit just because like, oh yeah, I can challenge someone who's like trying to jump on wake up after this. But um, there's gotta be a better way. And I realized that if we use the EXDP, not only do we get more damage, but we also get a safe jump because you actually can't back tech from an EX move. So I have the bot set to back tech by default and they can't do it. So EX moves, uh, at the very least, the ones I've tested are hard knockdowns. So I wanna use EX uh, DP as a reaction in situations like this if I don't feel confident anti-earing regularly. And also I might just wanna start using it if I ever get a hit 
that I can easily combo into it because again, this is a hard knockdown. They're not gonna have recovery options. We can get a safe jump if we walk forward and delay our jump just a little bit. And I don't really care about the cooldown on the EXDP. Even though it's gonna take a while for this to come back, I don't use DP as much as my other specials and matches. So I don't mind spending it for a knockdown. Also, I found out you can actually get a combo from this if you hit with it in just the right height in the corner. It doesn't come up too often, but if you notice that it looks like it's going to combo, you can totally get something really good for this. Although I, I need to actually lab this a little bit more. Oh my gosh, this is actually like mad damage. <laughs> oh, I have an idea. It's not going to work right now, but... Yes! Ooh, <laughs> I haven't comboed off EXDP yet. I labbed that a little bit earlier and it totally worked out. Throw tech situations also came up for me in my matches a lot. I feel like I'm teching them pretty consistently, but I noticed there's a difference between a quick tech and a late tech in this game. But if you notice, if I tech it later in the throw tech window, my character gets knocked down. So if we turn HP recovery off in the settings, you'll see that I actually take a little bit of damage for this too. It's probably like, one uh, fireball's worth of damage, something like that. But more important than that, the person who initiated the throw is actually plus on block in this situation. And I wasn't taking uh, advantage of these plus frames. So it looks like we can test this if we go into our settings and set them to throw break at a late timing. And then we can practice our media afterwards. So let's set them to counter attack with the fastest normal, I assume is her standing light, and we can practice getting a meaty here. Counter on throw break, that is godlike. You can set these for everything. So let's set a counter action on throw break. Let's have her do her fastest normal, her standing light, and we can practice getting a meaty this way. Yikes. And once we establish that they don't want to mash buttons, we could probably start going for throw or we can bait a throw with an overhead or a shin. And also I need to recognize after I tech a throw that I'm negative. So even though her health is at literally zero, we can't kill her with the throw tech, which is nice. So there's still a reward for teching. You take less damage, you don't get safe jumped afterwards. It's still worth it even if you don't do it perfectly. But at this health, we can still chip out with chip damage. One thing that's worth noting is, look, they are barely not at one health. I actually can't chip out at this health. They need to be at exactly one health to be able to get chipped out. And that's an important thing in this game. So once you realize that your health has reached the point that you're actually at one HP, you have blocked the very last special move you can block, you have no more visible health left, you have to basically spot dodge every projectile, you have to roll through every projectile, you can't block anything at all. So in my matches, I've been noticing times where they're close to being chipped out, but they're not at one HP yet. So I've been doing this string with Grand, where basically I just want to do these two special moves together. The first one puts them at one health, the second one will chip them out. And your opponent's going to try to do things like this to you too, so try to keep that in mind. Should you be trying to reversal something, should you be trying to spot dodge, if you block a special move, you lose, so you're going to have to take risks like that sometimes. It's honestly kind of hype <laughs> to be at that health and, and just dodging everything like it's a bullet hell shooter game. And when it actually works out for you and you make the comeback or, or you're, maybe you're both at that low health and you happen to clutch it out, it's super hype. I, this game has like a ton of moments like that that I'm, I'm really enjoying. That's all my training mode for now. It's been like five days. Obviously, I can't fit full matches in this video or it would be way too long. But if you do want to watch any of my progress with this game, I was actually streaming some of my matches over on my Twitch channel. I think he's barely alive. I see lives. Thanks for the follow, dude. Yeah, he had to. He actually had to. Oh, those are too slow. I forgot. Yeah, if you meet with a light in this game, I actually really need to talk about that. Uh, if you meet with a light, you'll recover in time to block most supers. Yeah, I didn't do that on purpose, but it is a thing that happens and it's really nice. the super super and I could block in time that was first try let's give her another action where she like hits a button so we have to like actually meaty properly and we'll set this to random so sometimes she'll do the super and 
time. We should be able to block. Yep. Yeah, we are meeting properly. And if they go for super, they can't do it. I think. Got me that time. So maybe it's a timing issue. If I'm too late on the meaty, I think this one should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm a little late, then it won't work. Okay, good block. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought I had the meter. He actually would have almost died if I just did super right away. <laughs> Grand. Dude, the medium fireball is so good. I love eating other fireballs with it. Thanks for the follow. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's the cheese. That's the, the persona player in me. Negative overhead. Negative overhead into DP. That is definitely the persona player in me. Felix the Grey, thanks for the follow. Oh, that was actually godlike dodge. I need to get like more comfortable punishing things with a single hit in the super, but I'm just so unsure right now that I need the target combo to help me hit confirm. <laughs> I really wish the close hit worked a little. Uh... I'm an idiot. I tried to super when I didn't have meter. I'm so not used to even looking at meter in this game because it's like at the top. I just assume like halfway through a round. Oh yeah, I probably have 100 meter. I input super without even looking. That move is good when it's charged up. It's good all the time, but... Okay, so I just realized the easier way to react to fireballs with that move is to already be holding it. And then when you see the fireball, you just let go. Because once you've started holding it, it's invincible after it's fully charged. I, I was looking at my stream footage from yesterday and I noticed that it was actually a lot easier to react to fireballs with his unique action if it was fully charged up, if I was already holding the button. So you can kind of like hold it and let it rip whenever you let go of the button. And I think the part where you let go is the invincible part, not the startup of it. So I've been having some inconsistencies reacting to fireballs, and I think this is going to solve my problem. Okay, so let's fully charge up this move, and when we see the fireball, let's try to react to it. I have four different recordings right now, and uh, they're all at different timings to the fireball, so I don't know when it's going to come. That's hard. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's try again, but this time we're just going to let go when we see the fireball. We're not going to start the whole thing. We're going to already be charging it, and when we see the fireball, we'll let go. That's so much easier. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so much easier. So uh, I'm definitely going to remember this. It actually makes this consistent even on net play. So I think this is probably how the move is supposed to be used. And remember, we can cancel out of this at any point, even while we're charging a fully charged version. So if we let go, we're good. Obviously, if our opponent knows that this is what we're doing, they'll just not throw a fireball and maybe they'll run up and they'll do something else. But uh, remember, we can always choose to either just cancel out and go back to neutral and go back to throwing fireballs or whatever, or we can just let it rip and get the damage, which is uh, totally fine too. This move is so cool. This move makes neutral like really fun. Yeah, he's been going backwards after that a lot. It looks like she can choose what direction he goes after the first spear. And uh, I figured that'd probably punish if he went back. All right, so it has been a week already. Time really flies. Before we wrap this up, and before I get to the unfortunate task of having to edit a whole week of footage down, I want to review what we did this week. Just a really quick recap. So day one, we learned about system mechanics. We became familiar with our character's tools. We learned about how the throw mix-up works and how to actually beat someone's throw tech so we can mix them up properly. Came up with a basic neutral strategy, mostly revolving around fireballs, anti-airs, and trying to counter poke our opponents and occasionally whiff punish them. And then we came up with one block swing we could use just to get ourselves started. And that was basically it for day one. 
Day two, we actually played a lot of matches and we wrote down notes for everything we saw that was interesting, that we might want to lab, that we might want to remember to do in the future, whatever it is. And also during those matches, we actually tried to practice and refine the things that we thought we wanted to do from day one. So we were able to practice anti more, we were able to practice our throw mix-ups more, we were able to practice the fireball game, reacting to other people's fireballs. And this is actually how we learned to challenge those fireballs with our medium so we could kind of eat theirs and beat them with ours. Basically, we just wanted to play some matches and see how the things that we labbed actually worked out in those matches. And obviously, we wanted to build up some muscle memory along the way so that we could practice those things and not have to think about them so much in the future. Day three, we went into training mode and labbed all the things that we found from day two, all the things that we wrote down in our notes. So we found a use for medium fireball, we found options to challenge the opponent when they're plus, but we're too far for our normals to reach. So if I can't hit with this, we can probably hit with that. Or we can challenge with a fireball. We can just walk into range and then challenge with our normals. Something along those lines. Also realize that I need to use my EX moves more sparingly. There's no reason for me to use EX fireball in a combo mid screen. There's no, well, there's sometimes a reason to use it in neutral, but remember that when I do, I don't have access to any of my fireballs for a long time. We also learned some lower risk options to deal with someone who's jumping from far away. If I can't anti an opponent who's jumping at me in a certain range, then I can probably challenge him after he lands, and that's a little bit better. And even if I happen to block the opponent's jump in at this range, it's not that big of a deal. And then we also just got a lot of experience in the previous day reacting to things like fireballs with our spot dodge. And we kind of just realized how fun it is to you know, do something like charge up our unique action, react to fireballs, and spot dodge. This kind of thing is just really fun. <laughs> I really dig it. I think neutral whenever I can play like this is just really fun. Day four, we streamed lots of matches and practiced again a lot of the things that we training moded the previous day, and then we wrote down notes on all the things that we wanted to lab afterwards. And then day five, we went into training mode, figured out how all the notes that we wrote down worked. We labbed all those things. I'm sure you can kind of see a pattern at this point. We learned that roll doesn't work against moves that are close to the ground, so we're going to have to learn to challenge in these situations with something else. We learned that I have to use the Tim's Kick more to challenge certain things when I'm far away, especially since it goes over a lot of things that are close to the ground, which is really important, I think. I think if I didn't have this tool, I wouldn't know how to challenge characters like Fairy in some situations. Or at the very least, if we didn't have this tool, we'd have to go back to the drawing board and find something else. We also realized that the unique action with Gran is really good and I should be using it a lot more. It's super active. It's pretty safe if you space it out. In the corner, it does a lot of damage on counter hit. And in the future, we might want to optimize these combos a little bit more. But for now, this is good enough. I think my thinking when it comes to combos is that other people will probably optimize it anyway. I used to be all about figuring that stuff out, but these days I care more about the practical uses for our tools. And I can, you know, steal someone's optimal combo down the road. We also realized that our unique action is pretty good as a meaty setup. And then in situations where we don't feel comfortable anteering with our crouching heavy, we can use DP as an option instead. And this also led to us realizing we should be using EXDP more often if we're reacting to something like this because we want to make sure that we maintain pressure and get a little bit more damage if we do happen to hit with it. And since we get a hard knockdown from an EX move anywhere on the screen, it's probably a pretty good option for us even just from regular mid-screen hits too, especially since we get a safe jump with it. And we also got some practice anteering with EXDP near the corner, where sometimes if we recognize it, we can get a combo afterwards. Although again, this is something we'll want to optimize more in the future. For now, I'm just happy to realize that we can confirm off it at all. I also realized that we weren't taking advantage of our plus frames after our opponent late techs our throw. So we got some practice actually getting a proper meaty afterwards and going for more mix-ups. And although this wasn't something that we labbed, we also did talk about chipping out our opponents and how when we recognize that we're at a point where we could get chipped out, we have to play in a way where we don't block at all. So we're gonna have to react to every fireball with a spot dodge. We're gonna have to take risks sometimes by using our uh, reversals and by using our supers, rolling, spot dodging, etc. When we're at this stage of the game, we have to play Ultra Instinct or we die. Which honestly is kind of fun. Even if it doesn't work out, it's fun to see how long you can just stay alive at that point. I really dig it. <laughs> Then day six, we played more stream matches. We realized that our light attacks, if we meaty with them, will recover in time to block supers, at least some of the supers that we tested. 
but we probably still can't do this if we're expecting them to use a proper reversal like a regular DP. But against characters that don't have DPs, this seems like a really important thing to keep in mind. And while we played on day six, we just practiced doing a lot of the things that we were labbing. We practiced using our universal action in unique ways. We practiced taking advantage of our opponent being negative after a delayed throw tech, and it all kind of felt like it was starting to come together. And experimenting in matches with the things that we were practicing already is what led us to realize that if we're already holding our unique action, we can react to something like a fireball significantly easier by just letting go of the button. Again, at this point, we're not perfect at anything that we've been labbing. We've just been proof of concepting a lot of things. But by deliberately thinking about those things and deliberately practicing those things in matches, we're setting up a really good base for ourselves and we're getting really good practice. Instead of just playing a lot and building habits that we feel like we have no control over just based on what's worked and what hasn't worked, we're deliberately choosing how we want to play and we're taking steps to reach that as a goal, right? This kind of thing is really important. If you feel like just playing a lot isn't making you better, it's because it isn't. Playing a lot just helps you build habits. If you're not choosing what habits you want to build, you're really holding yourself back. So just keep that in mind. I'm probably going to say that in a lot of videos in the future because it's such an important thing. I wasted two years of playing fighting games because I didn't deliberately practice what I wanted to be practicing in matches. And it took me another like two years to unlearn all the bad habits I learned during those first two years. Don't be me. Don't screw yourself over. Try to deliberately practice what you think is going to be important down the road. All right, I'm, I'm going to get off my soapbox real quick. <laughs> and finally, here we are on day seven. We practiced uh, reacting to fireballs with the unique action, just as we had practiced the previous day in matches, just to double check that it worked the way that we felt. And here we are recapping our week. Recapping what you've done in the past is a really important thing. Don't just focus on labbing new tech. Don't just focus on playing lots of matches. Remember to recap what you've been doing recently and just make sure that it sticks with you. Kind of like reviewing notes for a class. At this point, I think we're done learning for our first week and I'm pretty happy with our progress. But what's next at this point? If we wanted to continue improving at this point, what would we do? At the moment, we're not perfect at any of the things we've been labbing. All we've been doing is just proof of concept of a lot of new things. We're not perfect at executing those things. We don't always think to do those things in matches yet. We don't always pick the right times for them in matches. So what we need to do is practice, practice, practice. And as we play, we're gonna be able to continue practicing all those things that we've been labbing. And we're gonna to continue to find new things to lab as we play. Also, at this point, we're gonna to have to play more matchups and we're gonna to have to learn about more characters. Throughout this week, there's a bunch of characters that I didn't even get to fight a single time. And over time, I'm gonna to have to find people who play those characters, get some practice against them, go into training mode, lab what they do, lab answers to the things that I'm having trouble with. At this point, what we've been doing is improving our Gran and polishing up our Gran, but we're gonna hit a wall real soon if we don't start to learn matchups. So we're gonna have to do that soon. Also, we should try to guess where the meta's going. Try to make a guess on what's gonna be big down the road. Obviously, we can't know anything for sure, but one thing I'm thinking about is that throw mix-up might look completely different a few months from now after people have really started getting competitive with the game. People might be challenging throws in ways other than simply just teching the throw or mashing to beat the throw before it comes out. But that's a topic for another day. And I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Thank you so much for sticking with me for most of an hour. If you want to continue learning Grand Blue, Dragon Ball Fighters, and other fighting games with me, please consider subscribing to the channel or following me on Twitch so you can see when I go live. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back with more soon. I really gotta plan my videos to be shorter. <laughs>